Hi, my name is Barbie and I'm a Chief Product Officer. I became Chief Product Officer before the age of 30. I'm not yet 30. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did to be able to get there because yes, some of it is luck, but actually a lot of it is strategy. If you don't know what Chief Product Officer is, it's just the person who makes the strategic key decisions when it comes to a product in the tech space. But this is not necessarily for techies whatever industry you work in, this advice might very well apply to you. So the first thing that I did is that I was willing to start small. You would be astounded the number of people that I speak to that want to work for like Meta, Spotify, Amazon. They're not willing to start small. They're not willing to go into a startup and build something from the ground up. And I know it's scary. But sometimes these people do have the leadership qualities that are required to work in a chaotic startup environment. But hey, I get it. Startups are not for everyone. But here's the thing though. I intentionally want to work for a startup because I know that one, startups do have quite a bit of money, contrary to what people think. They do fundraising. They are willing to pay people who they believe are like the quality people that can get them to the next level. Because they're a startup and they've not really worked in that space, there is a lot of room for growth and learning. And you want to find a space that allows you to make key decisions. You want to find a, a space where there's a bit of chaos and you can come in and implement process, help things happen from the ground up. Okay. So even though I'm using tech language, just apply that to your industry and you'll find that it probably is the same. When you go into these environments, it's very easy to be promoted. You're not competing with hundreds of thousands of other employees. So it's just about like, where do you want to start from? I decided to start from a startup. I have worked at a multinational before and I was like, uh uh, no, thank you. I do want a startup environment. I think despite the chaos, it's more for me. Well, maybe that's just because I'm the drama. I don't know. Anyways, moving on. So the next thing that I did was I did not stay at a job that I did not like. I don't care how long it was for. If I didn't like a job, I would start looking for another job immediately. If you know you don't like the job within two months, there's no point staying. Leave. I know people say like, oh, just stay, stick around. And you know, like, at least have one year on your CV. Here's the thing, like, you can leave in two months and not even mention them on your CV. Like, let them just be a memory to you. <laughs> Like, that's just me though. The other thing that I did is I was strategic. You have to be strategic, okay? So what that means is like, even when you're in the company and you finally like, you're finding your footing, you're meeting people, don't be the gossip of the office. Don't badmouth people. It will get around. I have never seen a situation where I said something to someone at the office in confidence and it did not get out. Like, it will always get out to somebody. Don't be the one that's always talking or complaining about other people. Don't try to play office politics unless you're good at it. And in order to be good at it, you have to have a lot of patience. Just try to be the diplomat of the situation. Don't always come at things with like, yeah, 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 I'm the leader. What I'm saying is learn to shut the up. It requires a lot of discernment, but ultimately, if you can master that, you're golden. I don't know what the other corporate environments are like, but I know that I've worked like in Italian corporate environments and they, this did not apply. This was the opposite of Italian corporate environment, okay? In Italy, if you do like a lot of great work and you're doing amazing, you don't have to open your mouth and be advertising it. Just tell your manager what you've done. Make sure that you're on job. Don't overdo things because once you start opening your mouth, they'll be like, okay, look at this person. They're being a bit braggadocious. They don't like that. Like Italians like modesty, okay? But in the UK, I found that if you don't advertise what you're doing, they're going to say that you're not doing anything. Even if you contributed the most, it doesn't matter. You cannot be quiet in a British corporate environment. I don't know if it's the same with the US or like with other Anglophone countries, but I just find that very interesting because it's very irritating. As somebody who grew up in Italy, like I tend to take the more modest approach. I don't mean do it in a very obvious way. Just like if you guys have a Slack channel, let's say you work remotely, pop all the documents that you've done, pop everything that you've done in there. Obviously don't do it every day. Maybe like a weekly digest could be helpful, especially if you're a product manager and you really just want to show your value. That's a great way to do that because the thing is people forget. They'll forget that you did an amazing job. They'll forget that you turned the company around. They'll forget that you brought in processes that everybody loves. They completely forget that because the day will come when you will inevitably make a mistake and there will be somebody waiting in the shadows. Make sure that the people who are influential to your promotion or your non-promotion are aware of your contributions to the company. That's all I'm saying. So let me know if this video was helpful. Let me know if you are aiming to be C-suite, if you're aiming for like something else within your company and you really want to get it, message me, whatever. I'm a Barbie world across all platforms. So you can definitely reach me wherever you need to and ask me any questions you might have. Yeah, ciao.